In April, social media posts out of China pointed to a potential major step for the Chinese People's Liberation Army Navy. If these images are accurate, their newest aircraft carrier is set to begin sea trials, putting the Fujian closer to operational status. It's a development that no doubt has the attention of American military leadership, not only because of the growing threat from China, but the U.S.'s current shortcomings when it comes to its own maritime forces. In February, retired Marine Corps Major Jeffrey Seavey wrote a piece for the U.S. Naval Institute titled, The U.S. Must Improve Its Ship Building Capacity. The central theme of that article was this line, The United States does not have the shipyard capacity to build new ships and fully maintain or repair ships that it currently holds in inventory. Given current shipyard capacity, the Navy is estimated to be 20 years behind in maintenance work. It's a subject that received considerable attention at this year's Sea Airspace 2024 Symposium. Shipbuilding is a key challenge for this decade. It's really our generational challenge uh, for those of us now in this business to, uh, to, to set the stage. And this is a, a pretty daunting task. The, uh, the vector is pretty clear. But it's not just military leadership that is sounding a cause for concern. It's an issue their commercial partners are all too familiar with. If we look at the world today with the, what the situation is in the Red Sea with the Houthi rebels, a potential conflict in the Pacific, obviously what's going on in Ukraine with Russia, there's significant risks that are in the, in the world today. Naval defense supplier Fairbanks Morse Defense started working with the Navy more than a century ago. And while that relationship remains healthy, CEO George Whittier says getting the government and their civilian partners on the same page is the first step in solving the country's current shipbuilding deficiencies. The challenge I think that we are facing as an industry is that the demand signals coming and the budgetary process are not matching the rhetoric and dialogue and discussion that's out there. And so as an industry, we need to say, what are the things we can do to try to get increased demand uh, that's out there to provide more commonality for us for the future? According to statistics from the United Nations, the U.S. and China are on equal footing when it comes to economic output. Where the U.S. is falling short is shipbuilding. And not just to China, but South Korea and Japan as well. There is no single smoking gun or easy fix to any of this, uh, but it's all a part of transparent, ruthless pursuit of, uh, of improvement proving performance there in a measured, very measured, fact-based data ways. So what's the solution? According to Whittier, part of the answer can be found away from the coasts. The biggest labor constraints are at the shipyards themselves. And the reason for that is they tend to be the dominant employer in their area, and that makes a lot of sense. However, if you think about the Midwest of the U.S. where we operate, we again have about 1,500 employees. We are not labor constrained and there is a tremendous opportunity to take work out of the shipyards and bring that into the Midwest uh, and start to get more work done. It's an idea that carries some historical weight. A major part of America's expansion westward was a 2,300 mile natural resource that still exists today. I don't think we're utilizing the Mississippi River at all. The Mississippi River is a gem and we're just not using it. I mean, St. Louis is one of the biggest cities in the country uh, and there's doing no work for the Navy. I mean, it's right there, right? There's labor available in the Midwest. We just have to be smarter about how we apply it. And just as important as the how is the when, because if the time comes, America likely can't afford to not be on the starting line when the gun sounds.